The proper attitude for being a vegetarian. At last, we have one more question. The question is, before I had started to learn Buddhism, life was so simple and happy. But after I came into contact with Buddhist practitioners, I noticed that interacting with them has made my life become too complicated. There are even rules for what pots and pans cannot be touched. This cannot be eaten, that does not conform to Buddhist regulations, so now I am hesitating on whether or not to learn Buddhism. This beginner in Buddhism has this question. Lei Ti Hu Xiaolin has spoken about this very clearly. When he first started to learn Buddhism, his whole family was all terrified. This cannot be touched, that cannot be touched, saying that his family is all creating bad karma, all leading to the retribution of the three evil paths. He scared his mother and father. They regarded him as a wicked person. When they heard that he was coming, the dishes on the table with fish, meat, quickly hide it, don't let him see it. It was a coincidental situation. He came to Hong Kong and saw my mother's photograph. This picture was taken in Hong Kong when I was reunited with my mother after 36 years of no contact with her. I was there giving lectures on sutras. We met there. When I saw Hu Xiaolin, I told him that my mother stayed very calm. It was not easy for her. She did not show her emotions when meeting with me. She listened to my lectures when I was preaching. After listening, she looked very peaceful. I said it was not easy for her at all. Staying in the dojo, I asked her what would you like to eat. She wanted to eat fish, so I asked the kitchen volunteers to buy fish. Every meal they served fish to her. She ate it while seeing all of us eat vegetarian food. She stayed for a week. After returning to Shanghai, she became vegetarian herself. If we want her to have the idea from her own heart, we cannot nag her. After a life of hardships, she just wants to eat a little bit of fish. If she cannot get it, how would that be okay? Hu Xiaolin heard this. He then came to a realization. Oh, now I get it, said Hu. I said, when you go home, no matter what, do not restrict your parents again. Whatever they want to eat, give it to them. Since then, their relationship has become spectacularly good. His father and mother are now very grateful towards Buddhism. They never thought learning Buddhism is so good. Learning the traditional culture is so good. Among their old friends, they have spread the word. No obstacles. Where would there be any obstacles? Buddhism allows exceptions to precepts for special conditions, especially regarding diet. But we must understand, why does Buddha tell you not to eat them? Eating meat is killing. These animals are not willingly sacrificing themselves for us. If we stopped eating meat, then other people would stop killing animals, and even if they continue, we will not be affected by this karma. If we eat meat, the killing karma that those people create must be shared by us. If we understand this principle, we would not be willing to eat meat anymore. Vegetarian. Vegetarian is great. I learned Buddhism for maybe half a year, and then I became vegetarian. 
Having read a few times the Kshitigarbha Sutra, I was determined to become vegetarian. Before I had started to learn Buddhism when I was young, around the age of 17, 18, 19, I hunted for three years. Having killed many lives, I truly beg for repentance. The effects of this killing karma, my father had performed to me an example. When my father died, the situation of his sickness was exactly the same as the Ksitigarbha Sutra says. It allowed me to see it with my own eyes. I originally did not know why was his death so miserable, died so miserably. Only after learning Buddhism did I know. That was the retribution of killing from hunting. This was a very great warning to me. So I cut off my meat eating, changed to being vegetarian. At my workplace, they were nice. When we asked them to make vegetarian food, they made it especially for us. In our department, vegetarian people were not many about seven or eight, perfect to fit one table. In vegetarianism, you all must understand. The Chinese word of hun, the five pungent herbs, is vegetables, not meat. Hun has the grass radical. What is meat? Sing. It means the aroma of meat. Hun and sing are usually put together, sing implying meat. So among vegetables, there are five pungent vegetables which also cannot be eaten. Scallions, garlic, chives, Chinese onion, and onion. Why? These five kinds have a bad nature. By eating them raw, it is easy to create heat in your liver, having temper tantrums. Its effect when raw is no good. When cooked, these five pungent herbs will create hormones, acting as an aphrodisiac. This is Buddha's reasoning for setting this precept. You must understand why he set this precept. So these items, if we use as spices, seasoning, it is no problem, they can all be used. Why? It is only a small amount, it would not have an effect, so it can be used. Some people have completely stopped using them. If completely not using them, vegetarians will feel that the food they are eating has no flavor at all, they would no longer want to be vegetarian. When you use as seasoning, vegetarian food is very delicious. They can all be used, especially for laity. So you have to understand the principle, have to understand Buddha's reasoning for setting this precept and how you should implement it. This is knowing, understanding the principle. However, during times of sickness, all can be used. If the doctor gives a prescription, using these things as medicine, all can be used. Even animals. There are many animals used in traditional Chinese medicine. This is okay. It is not a violation. It is to cure the illness. Another exception is 70 years old or older or with a weak physical body, needing these things to help them. All can be used. All can make an exception to this precept. So the precepts based on the situation, each one has its exception, prohibition, upholding, and violation. You must understand. When you don't understand, then you don't know how to act. So this all must be known. As for alcohol, when I first began to learn Buddhism, during that time I went to a temple. The elderly monk in the temple saw us young people and was very joyful. The monks were already 70, 80 years old. At mealtime, he wanted me to eat with him. Every time I saw on his table, there was a cup of alcohol. I did not dare to ask, why is he drinking alcohol? 
Later, I went to Taichung to learn from Teacher Li. I reported this incident to him. Teacher Li said this was an exception. For people older than 70, alcohol can help the blood circulation. This usage is acceptable. We thus understand. Seeing the elderly monk drink one cup with every meal, just one small cup, one cup of alcohol. When you don't understand, you will have suspicion. After completely clarifying and understanding it, you will then be very clear. Buddhism is very flexible, not stiff at all. So if you don't understand these principles, you cannot even uphold the precepts. If an exception should be made and you do not make it, this is breaking the precepts as well. If no exception should be made but you make one, that is also breaking the precepts. So if you don't learn the precepts well, you will not know how to uphold them. You will not know how to act. You will not be able to obtain Dharma joy in your learning Buddhism. You will not be able to obtain Dharma joy in your daily life. To tell the truth, many people have some deviations from Buddhism. But we must know, Buddha signifies great wisdom, great consummation. It is the realm of non-obstruction between noumenon and phenomena, and the realm of non-obstruction among all phenomena. The person who is full of Dharma joy and great ease is a Buddha. How could we feel so toilsome to learn it? So learning Buddhism, if we do not obtain Dharma joy, then what are we learning for? Learning Buddhism will lead to a life of Dharma joy forever, forever living in a world of gratitude. If learning Buddhism was so full of hardship, I would have quit long ago. If being vegetarian was not a good thing, then how could I be so happy for more than 60 years and my life become more and more simple and healthy? My whole life I never used any vitamins, whole life never used any medicine. When I get sick, really, I just recite Amitabha. I do not look for a doctor. Now, if I have a little small illness, it is my believers who frantically look for a doctor. It is very admirable. They found the doctor and brought him to me. So I cannot refuse. Just go with it. Rejoice in their merits. We have to have confidence in ourselves and have faith in Buddha, have faith in the traditional culture. Can Buddhism and traditional culture be passed down? The key is on our generation. If we do not pay earnest effort, this tradition will possibly be discontinued. Then we are all sinners.